We didn't get to see a lot of it in the trailer, but I believe Jason's car gives away a lot about his story, his relationship with Lucia, and what their life is going to be like. Now, before we get into that, one thing that a lot of people have pointed out and have even asked me about is the artwork and the vehicle that is seen in the artwork. And we know it's a two-door silver vapid muscle car, and it has exactly six bullet holes in it, at least on the side of the vehicle that we can see. It also has some paint scratches on there from what looks to be like an accident with another vehicle. And a lot of people have been asking me about that. This is a different car than the one we see in the trailer. I don't know if it has any significance or if it was just drawn for artistic purposes, but I think the bullet holes are supposed to represent what this story is based on, and that is Bonnie and Clyde. And Bonnie and Clyde in real life had a silver vehicle kind of like this. It's obviously not the exact same car. And when their crime spree was all said and done, their car was covered in bullet holes. So I'm not sure if this is just supposed to represent the overall theme of Bonnie and Clyde, or is this foreshadowing that right now there's only a few bullet holes, but by the end of the story there could potentially be more, possibly signifying that there's going to be a death of one of these characters, Jason or Lucia, or possibly even both of them, although I'm not sure how Rockstar would do that from a story standpoint. And one other thing I kind of noticed as well about the artwork, and just a small little detail about Jason, is he actually has a Love Fist bracelet on. So Love Fist is a band that started in Vice City that was first featured in GTA Vice City. It'll be interesting to see if they make a return, but it's kind of a cool nod and throwback to the original Vice City and a time that Jason might be a big fan of, which would kind of be the 80s. But either way, I was getting a lot of questions about that, so I figured I would throw that into this video. But what I really want to talk about now is Jason's car from the trailer. And in previous Grand Theft Auto games, all of our main protagonists have had their own sort of vehicle, whether it be Michael's Tailgater, which which, funny enough, it looks like we actually kind of see Michael's tailgater in the trailer also. We're just kind of jumping around and talking about vehicle facts in this video. You can actually see it in this shot right here where all the cars are driving down like the Vice Beach Strip. I don't know if that means Michael's going to be returning. There are multiple characters that are going to be allowed to drive that car, but that is the Obey tailgater or whether it was Franklin Clinton's car, the Bravado Buffalo, or whether it was Trevor Phillips' truck, the Kenis Bodie. And even in Grand Theft Auto 4, you had Roman's taxi, you had Johnny Clevett's motorcycle. In The Ballad of Gay Tony, you had Tony Prince's benefactor Shafter, which we also saw return in Grand Theft Auto Online that he drives. So long story short, each character really has like their own vehicle that they end up driving. It's like a default car. And in Grand Theft Auto 6, we saw that with Jason. We actually see it in a couple of different clips in the trailer. And it's this little rusty old orange four-seater muscle car with a black vinyl roof, as well as black racing stripes on the hood and on the trunk as we sort of see it drifting off down the road as both Jason and Lucia head to the motel. But there's actually a lot of details on Jason's car that actually give away a handful of different things that could be going on throughout the story. Let's actually talk about them right now. So for starters, on the back of Jason's vehicle, you can actually see a handful of dusty handprints. Now, I'm not sure if this is Rockstar just adding realism to Jason's car. When we see them, they are in this dusty, deserty area. So this very easily could just be Rockstar saying, Jason has an older vehicle. It's got a lot of dust on there. He doesn't wash it all that much, or at least that's not his priority. And so there's going to be handprints on there. This also could imply that something is in the trunk. Now, whether that's a little bit more nefarious, like a body or a person, it didn't look like a kidnapping was happening there, or if the trunk of the car is just used, unlike other Grand Theft Auto titles, but like something we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2, where your horse sort of acted as like a station where you could store clothes and weapons and goods, etc. So is this going to be the same thing that happens here, where your vehicle in your trunk is used to store, you know, the weapons that you aren't using, and then the weapons that you do want to use, you're only able to carry two or three, or there might be like two small weapons, one big weapon, something like that. So it does seem like the trunk of the car might be usable, which would be an interesting and different 
feature to the Grand Theft Auto series. Now, another interesting attention to detail is there's actually tire deformation when Jason is driving and drifting his car, which means that this game is going to have some insane physics. So I'm not the best at explaining this, but essentially of what I know, when you're drifting the vehicle, the weight is going to be shifting to the outside of the tires of the direction you're drifting. So that's why you're seeing the tires deform a little bit because the weight is shifting to the outside. In that exact same shot, once he drives over the curb and starts drifting, you can also see dust and leaves pick up as he begins to speed away. So there's a lot of little detail things here that I just think are super cool. But that was one thing I noticed as well, that there's some pretty serious tire deformation. Now, Jason, interestingly enough, has also a lot of bumper stickers on the back of his vehicle that might give away some of his opinions or some things that he might be interested interested in or just things that he cares about like one of them for example says arrest Andrew Bode so I don't know if Andrew Bode is a politician or is like running for mayor or city council or is just someone that committed a crime but was let free we don't know maybe there's a chance we will meet this Andrew Bode character maybe there's a chance we only hear about him read about him see him on TV I don't know but Andrew Bode is someone that Jason wants arrested. Now, in that same shot, we can also see another anti-Andrew Bode sticker. This one has like the red crossed out, as well as something that says Cranky Hippie and what looks to be an American flag sticker in the shape of a peace sign. So again, we're getting a few more bits of details here about Jason, his beliefs, and what his backstory might be. Now, we also has another bumper sticker that says, say no to nuclear power, as well as save the bees. So it sounds like Jason cares about animals, or at least that's some sort of campaign that he promotes, and he is also not into nuclear power. I feel like all of these opinions could come into play. We know Rockstar loves poking fun at not only pop culture issues, but political issues, you know, things that are going on around the world. So I could see all of these things coming into play. Now, one more bumper sticker that can be seen. It's a sticker of a guy named Cesar. This kind of looks like it's a political bumper sticker. Like if you were voting for a president, you wanted to support them, you put a sticker on the back of your car. So maybe Cesar is like mayor or someone that you could potentially, not like us per se, vote for, but the fictional characters of Leonida can vote for. And maybe that's connected to the arrest Andrew Bode because Jason is a fan of Cesar, whoever he is. I'm sure we will find out more and unfortunately we're only dealing with like the YouTube version of the trailer Rockstar hasn't even uploaded this to their own newswire so we're dealing with these images in the best possible quality possible but it does say Cesar on the back and the last other thing that I've kind of noticed from Jason's car just a neat little detail is there's water dripping from the exhaust this is very common when you accelerate very quickly or you're turning drifting braking you're gonna have water that comes out of those exhaust pipes so it just looks like there's some amazing sort of little secrets and attention to details here regarding Jason's vehicle. And we've also talked about this detail in the past where Lucia's seat sort of moves when she pushes her weight forward. Well, her car seat also has sort of a worn out texture with creases, which is typically seen in old leather seats. Again, indicating that Jason's car is a little bit more on the retro side. But anyways, that right there is some of the secrets of Jason that we can learn just from his vehicle alone, which is so cool. Let me know if you knew about any of these in those comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You want to stay up to date on all the GTA 6 videos that I'll be doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work. And if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. and I'll see you guys in the next video.